And as they leave, I said, have a good day. God bless you. It's how Cynthia Fernandez greeted drivers while working as a temporary toll taker on the Garden State Parkway. That is until the mother of three says her boss told her to stop. He told me he wanted to talk to me that I couldn't say God bless you anymore to customers because somebody might get offended. <laughs> All right, welcome back to Midpoint from KXO Radio, Portland, Oregon, syndicated across the country. Lars Larson. Lars, we got a whole lot to do here. We got a two minute warning. Here we go. The woman in New Jersey told not to say, God bless you, files a lawsuit basically because she says, I said that to everybody. Aren't we still? This political correctness is killing us here. It needs to go away, and this issue is ridiculous. The fact that somebody says, God bless you, should not be banned from public speech. The government shouldn't be promoting religion, but it also shouldn't be holding back people in a religious expression. For goodness sake, if I sneeze, aren't you going to wish me God bless you, Ed, or at least Gesundheit? Absolutely, I would do that, although I would probably have to make sure you had a hanky handy, just in case, <laughs> all right? But you're right. Here we go. Supreme Court, second issue here, Obamacare, the law about federal tax subsidies that cannot be offered in the 34 states that did not yep. set up their own insurance exchanges. Lower courts have split. This could be a death knell to Obamacare. So do you Good. think the justices will chicken out on this one, too? I think they probably will, unfortunately, but here's the, the rule that we've always been supposed to follow. If you have a bad law and Obamacare is a bad law, the best way to get rid of it is to strictly enforce it. That language is unequivocal, and Congress did not write it by accident. They said if you're getting your health care through a state exchange, you get a subsidy. Thirteen states chose to have a state exchange, some of those even... And cry to get rid of Obamacare will come much, lo much louder. 30 seconds. Isn't it fair to say that some members of the media are sort of fear mongering the whole Ebola thing at this point? I don't think so. I really? think our government been downright incompetent and unfortunately my mom was a nurse I love the medical profession but that hospital when a man walks in from Liberia and says I'm from Liberia and I'm sick your first question should be have you had any close contact with an, Ob uh, an Ebola patient to which he would have said yes I carried a sick pregnant woman and she had Ebola and she's dead now and it would have yep. led to a much different reaction we are not ready for this and so far CDC and the medical establishment has done a lousy job oh. I'll agree with you on that one. Lars Larson, KXL Radio, Portland, Oregon, syndicated. Always a pleasure, my friend. We'll talk to you again Thanks. soon. All yeah. right, take care. Reminder that later on this week, we'll be joined here at Midpoint by veteran political analyst and Newsmax contributor Dick Morris for his take on the coming midterm elections and a whole lot more. Plenty of grist for which can be found in his New York Times bestseller, Power Grab, Obama's plan for a one-party nation. The book takes on what President Obama's endgame is for the remaining two years of his presidency and beyond. America's at a crossroads, and according to Dick Morris, there's the chance America is heading towards being a nation ruled by one political party with a very distinct agenda. Power Grab, Obama's dangerous plan for a one-party nation, now available at your local bookstore, or make it easy. Order your copy online at Amazon.com. Join us Thursday. We'll talk to Dick Morris. And now, this American Moment. On October 6, 1973, while the nation of Israel observed Yom Kippur, the holiest day of the year for Jews, 
the combined military forces of Egypt and Syria launched a simultaneous and surprise attack on Israel's southern and northern borders. Within days, the Israeli army found itself in retreat, losing a third of its equipment and outnumbered by the enemy three to one. As he could not believe, he said, we cannot stop them. Recognizing their very existence was at stake, President Nixon moved quickly to resupply our ally Israel and their besieged army. With an around-the-clock airlift of U.S. military support, the tide of battle shifted, and soon the Israeli armies were advancing into both Syria and Egypt, with Israeli General Ariel Sharon's tanks threatening Egypt's third army with annihilation. The Soviet Union, who were supporting the Arab armies, quickly called upon President Nixon to stop the Israelis' advance or risk a larger war. The president intervened, saved the Egyptian army, and then used the opportunity to convince Egypt's President Anwar Sadat to seek a peaceful solution to a conflict that had plagued the region for decades. You're watching An American Moment on Newsmax TV.